All right, we're gonna go over formative two on SAP six. What I want you to do first is pause the video, read the answer I have here, and compare with yours and make changes. So do that now. And then I'm just gonna briefly go through the answer. So if there's some aspect you don't understand, this will help you understand it a little bit better. So we want to find out the time so we're looking at time. So we know we're gonna end up here. That's gotta be our third statement. Our ending statement is gotta be on this part of the equation over here. And what are we given? We're given stuff about velocity. And we're given their two different initial velocities. And we know that they stop. So when they stop, this final velocity, that becomes zero. And so whichever one has the bigger initial velocity is gonna have a bigger change in velocity. And that's what it's gonna tell us about our first step here, our first statement, that one has a larger change in velocity and that they have the same mass, and that's gonna tell us about the change in momentum. So A has a larger change in momentum, so now we're in the middle part of the equation. And now, if you just said here, and a lot of people do this, oh, a larger change in momentum means more time, that is a sometimes true statement and you need to write an always true statement. So for instance, if the delta P is larger, you have to talk about how the forces are the same in order for time to be have to be larger as an always true statement. Because maybe the delta P, the change in momentum is larger, and the force is larger and time could be the same. Or maybe the force is smaller and time could be a lot bigger, um, but you need to address all those variables. Oops. Um, so just make sure you didn't write specifically for this last statement here, a sometimes true statement, and that yours is an always true statement. Got to talk about all the variables in there. So there's number one, here's number two. Again, pause the video, read my answer, read your answer and make corrections, and then come back to the video when you're done. All right, here we go. Um, so on this one, we want to know which one's moving faster. So we're going to be ending up on the velocity side of the equation. And we're given that it's the same force. And we're given that Serena follows through a longer period of time. So we're starting over here. And if it's the same force, but the time is bigger, that means that Serena has to have a, a larger change in momentum uh, for her tennis ball. And so First, once we kind of hit the middle part of this equation, if the change in momentum is larger, then we need to have an always true statement. If we're looking about, um, want to talk about their change in velocities, we need to mention the mass. So a larger change in momentum doesn't always mean a larger change in velocity, except if the masses are the same. So you need to say that they have the same mass, uh, and then we can say, oh, Serena's tennis ball has a larger change in velocity. Uh, the way we said it here is just a little bit more efficient way. We said, oh, Serena's tennis ball moves faster as they both start from rest. So if our initial velocity was zero, then we know a larger change in velocity automatically has to mean a larger final velocity. All right, on to number three. Again, pause the video. Make your changes and corrections. This one here seems to not give us very much information. We just know that Sierra is moving faster and that's it. So we need to apply some of our physics concepts. And the thing that you have to understand is when they're pushing off each other, they're exerting a force on each other. And just like the lab we did where we had the carts colliding, when they exert a force on each other, it doesn't matter who is stronger or who has a larger mass, the forces are always gonna be the exact same size of force and in opposite directions. So that's where we're gonna start, with the same exact force because of Newton's third law. And it's gonna be the same time because one object can't be pushing another object without the other pushing back. Um, it's kind of, that's uh, sort of a, a common sense thing. Uh, it kind of follows with Newton's third law. If, if, the, if one object exerts a force on the other, the other is exerting a force back in the opposite direction of the same size. 
that's Newton's third law, then that means the time that they're exerting those forces is exactly the same. So whenever we have a third law problem and we're saying that the sizes of the forces are the same, the time that those forces are exerted are also going to be the same. So that means they have the same um, force times time, so they have the same change in momentum. So there we're on step two, change in momentum. And then if they have the same change in momentum, we want to figure out the how their mass is compared. So we're going to look at the, the change in velocity. And since they both started from rest, whoever has a uh, larger change in velocity will have be going faster at the end and vice versa. All right, that is for formative number three.